Between snakes and lizards, I think lizards probably make the best pets for a lot of people. But do you want a small lizard, medium, or big? Today, let's go over the top five lizards that make the best pets, and we're gonna start from itty bitty and go all the way up to the biggest ones you can get. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wicked Spicked Reptiles, stick around. When I first got started into reptiles, I had lizards first and then I got into snakes. And I think a lot of people do that. In the most part, lizards are a little bit less scary to a lot of people than snakes are. Not that snakes are scary at all, but I understand why something that doesn't have arms or legs might be a little bit more alien than something that does. They're just so much more different than us. So if you're a lizard person, I am human still. Let's go over the best pets in every size bracket because I don't think being a beginner means you have to start small. Sometimes you want something medium or even really big, but we're gonna discuss that. But let's start off small. Number five, if I'm going micro geckos here, I'm gonna talk about morning geckos. Now there's a bunch of really good ones. There's the Lycodactylus, which are the really bright blue ones, the Williams Eye, I like those too. There's day geckos from Madagascar that are really small. But I think that morning geckos are cheap to buy, cheap to house, cheap to take care of. They're basically the perfect starter reptile. If you are thinking about, hey, I want something that's small that I can build upon. I'm gonna have this thing. It's not gonna take up a lot of room and maybe later I'll move on, but you don't have to worry about getting rid of it because of a space issue. And morning geckos are really rewarding. I like them. I put them in my dart frog enclosures, but I also have them standalone as well. So let's talk about the size. We're talking about two and a half to three and a half inches. These guys are small. And what makes them really unique is that they're parthenogenic. So what that means is that they're all females. They're basically clones of themselves and they're gonna be able to breed without males. That is super cool. So they produce little eggs, little babies that turn into these full two and a half to three and a half inch animals. And to house one, if you want to say have one or two, you could easily keep them in a front opening enclosure, say 12 inches by 12 inches by 18 inches high. You could do that pretty easily, fits on your desk. They don't really need too much heat. The humidity is easy to take care of because they do like it a little bit more humid, being that they're from Southeast Asia in forests and places like that. So the humidity is easily kept if you mist every day and you keep them with live plants. This is something that I love to do. I love live plants in my enclosures and they're just pretty awesome. And if you have dart frogs, learn how to do it, but it's possible to cohab them as well. Okay, let's get a little bit bigger, but not too big. I'm talking about African fat tail geckos, leopard geckos, Chinese cave geckos. I didn't want to pick one over the other. I know normally I do this and they're interchangeable. So let's just talk about how they're interchangeable. More or less, leopard geckos are really easy to find. There's a million and a half morphs. They're beautiful, easy to keep. You can easily keep them in a 20 gallon long enclosure. That's what I recommend is a minimum size. They like it pretty dry and warm. But if you wanted something that likes it a little bit more humid, that looks almost the same, but comes in different patterns and morphs, then you'd want an African fat tail gecko. The care is so darn similar, except for, of course, one's gonna like it more humid, the African fat tail, than the leopard gecko. There's slight changes, like their eyes are different, their foot structure's different. There are differences, they're not the same. One's from Asia, one's from Africa. And then if we're talking about Asian geckos that have eyelids, because that's the other thing, all of these have movable eyelids, where say, a micro gecko, like uh, the Williams eye or the morning gecko, don't, these guys do. So Chinese cave geckos, if you like keeping things more humid and cooler, these guys are for you. Now, all of these are going to be on a scale. I would say leopard geckos are the best for handling, then African fat tails, they're interchangeable. And then Chinese cave geckos are a little bit more flighty. They're a little bit smaller, but not that much really. And they're really fun to watch because they're gonna climb a little bit more than the African fat tail or the leopard gecko. But either way, they're beautiful, they're fun, they're all insectivores, so it's really simple to get them to eat. Whereas with the morning geckos, they'll eat a prepared diet, rapache or pangea, whatever you wanna use. These guys are gonna need live insects. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, live insects, and you're gonna feed them basically the same amount in the same amount of time. Chinese cave geckos will eat a little bit less because you keep them cooler, therefore they have a lower metabolism. But either way, this is not a care guide, but there are some if you wanna watch. Let's move on to the next one. Number 
three. It's your time to shine. Diamond, come here. It's funny, I use the uh, Diamond, the Bearded Dragon in almost all my videos and almost never talk about Bearded Dragons. But if we're talking about medium-sized lizards, like there's really not much better than a bearded dragon. You're gonna want a much larger enclosure, right? Than the last two. I'm talking about four foot by two foot by two foot. Some people will say 75 gallon. These people are, uh, what do you call it? Wrong, don't do that. These animals might get 20, 22 inches, sometimes 24 if it's a really big male. So you're not gonna wanna do that. Now this is a smaller male. He's about 18 inches from snout all the way to the tip of his tail. I keep him in a four by two by two with lots of climbing opportunities, high strength UVB, hot basking spot, places for him to rub these pores on the bottom of his uh, butt, I guess, area, his, his uh, bottom. And to keep his nails trimmed, I give him branches, all the stuff you need for a bearded dragon. There's a care guide right here if you wanna watch. I think these are probably the best, in my opinion, and the easiest and the most uh, available knowledge, I would say, which is really important of all the medium sized lizards. It's gonna be really difficult to find a reptile shop or an expo that doesn't have these guys available and doesn't have someone qualified to give you amazing information. So that's why I think that although maybe boring and everyone has one, uh, there's really nothing wrong with a bearded dragon. They're freaking awesome. Plus we're breaking the mold here because these guys will eat not only insects, but they need salads. So things like arugula, Swiss chard, endive, watercress, stuff like that. Of course, in the care guide, I, I go more into detail. Supplement them correctly and make sure they have the UVB because these guys are diurnal where the other two are nocturnal, which means that those ones that we talked about earlier, the cave geckos and the eyelided geckos and the morning geckos, they're out during the night. These guys are out during the day and they sleep all night. So that's another thing to consider as well. Number two, we're getting into the big category. I would consider these big lizards, but not giant lizards. And I'm talking about Argentine black and white tagus. Now I'm gonna say tread carefully. I think the first three, if you're a beginner, you never had a reptile before, very easily you could take care of these guys without much hassle. When you start getting into something like an Argentine black and white tagu, which might get three or four foot long, we're talking about animals that are big, they're powerful, and they could be not dangerous to your life, but they could be dangerous to your limb, let's say. Because if you got a, a tagu that wasn't socialized well, although black and white tagus are known for being puppy dog tame a lot of the time, they could hurt you. They've got very big claws and they've also got very big teeth. Things. What? Eggs. Who? Hognose. Really? That's always exciting when there's just eggs. Anyway, I'll be right back with number two. Anyway, uh, hognose are really awesome snakes. Should I do a top five best snakes from small to big? Cause they'll be, anyway, let me know in the comment section. Tegus, however, are awesome because they start off really small. This is Mushu now at two years old. Now, of course they grow a lot faster than this if they don't go into brumation. It's a whole other video. But basically imagine a hibernation like a bear, but for reptiles. So these guys can grow within a year and a half to be two and a half, three feet, but sometimes it takes up to three years or maybe even longer to reach full size. And of course, males getting bigger than females. The problem is I'm talking about, you know, oh, you can get a four by two by two, which is a big enclosure, sort of takes up a lot of space, eight square feet. If you're getting a tegu, you're likely gonna need something that's eight foot by four foot. We are talking about 32 square feet. That is freaking huge. And then you need a little bit of height because you need basking spots. You need a lot of them. They like it humid. They like it hot. They need UVB because they are diurnal, which means uh, awake during the day. So this is a giant step ahead of bearded dragons. These are definitely not for beginners. These take a lot more time. Their diet is more varied. You'll feed them rats and you'll feed them salad mixes and then you'll feed them like, there's a whole bunch of things. Should I do a care guide? Just let me know. I'll do it for you if you like. Hit the like button, it's how I know you want it. But either way, these animals take way more effort, way more time, way more. So. The exciting part about them is that they're big, they're robust, you can handle them, they're mostly tame. It's fun to feed them. I know that some people get squeamish about feeding rats and maybe that's why you like lizards instead of snakes, but these guys will take rats down full prey items, they'll take down insects, and you can start them off in a smaller enclosure. Mushu right now is in a three foot enclosure, but the reason that I bought these eight foot enclosures beside me, well, was for Mushu. So she'll be going into that when she gets big enough. I like them because they're big, but they're not so unmanageable. And of course they could hurt you if they really wanted to, but most of them don't. And in terms of the say large size, like 
I guess, four foot lizards. This is probably one of the better ones. I think they're better than savannah monitors for most people. And the sailfin dragons or uh, water dragons, like there's so many that are similar size but I just think that tegus are kind of better. And that brings us to number one. Here's an animal that even for me is too big because you really can't buy anything commercial for them. I'm talking about Asian water monitors. Now there's a lot of monitors that are great. Argus monitors, for example, are fantastic. Uh, white throats, black throats. There are uh, croc monitors if you have money or say even uh, lace monitors. But if you want something that's affordable to buy and sort of, not really, honestly, it's not affordable to take care of these guys. To set them up is expensive because a water monitor might get six, seven, eight foot. I mean, look at the size of these ones. These ones are wild, right? And the ones in captivity can get just as big or bigger. So these animals are no joke. If they wanted to hurt you, they could. The reason I picked water monitors is because Asian water monitors are known for being able to be tamed out really, really well and socialized with humans really, really well. But make no mistake, if these guys wanted to tail whip you, I was tail whipped lackadaisically in the back of the calves and it hurt. If these guys really wanted to whip you, they could break your arm. So go into that knowing, but the main issue is not the danger factor. The main issue is the fact that an eight foot lizard can't be put in an eight foot box. These animals need huge enclosures. We're talking about things that you can't just buy off a shelf or order most of the time. They need part of a room. They need part of a yard. Look at the way that Camp Kennan keeps his with a pond. So I just don't think this is for most people. This is for the enthusiast that really puts lots of time and effort into one animal, the way that you treat a dog, but even more so than that. So I love Asian water monitors. They have a really cool diet, varied diet, but they're really for maybe 1% of keepers. So keep that in mind. And I want you to tell me in the comment section, what is your favorite, your favorite lizard that could be on this list? Maybe I can make a part two. As always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. It really helps this channel. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one meeting, helping with your collection, or if you have a YouTube channel or social media, whatever it is, one-on-ones with me, all that for as little as $1 a month. And that's it, because I do videos twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.